All right, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hurtel. So today, we're gonna get into building relationships. Look, if you're in sales, any area of sales, I don't care if it's real estate, mortgage, insurance, anything, if you're in sales, you are in the talk to people business, okay? You have to talk to people in order to get business, right? You have to prospect, you have to do that. But if you want business long term, you have to take those people that you're talking to and build relationships with them. So you're also in the building relationships business. Okay, so we have to get better at that. A lot of us are not very good at building relationships. We're very good at getting this deal, moving on, and never thinking about that person ever again. Okay, so I want you to ask yourself this question. If you've done a lot of deals in the past, do you ever sit there and go, man, I've done all these deals, but I'm sitting here, I'm constantly having to look for new people to get business from. Constantly having to prospect, constantly having to door knock, constantly having to email market, whatever the case may be. It's probably because you haven't done a very good job at building relationships. So those people you've done deals with in the past aren't referring you business or aren't giving you repeat business because you have no relationship with them. Or you're out there prospecting, you're talking to a lot of people, you're going on appointments and all these other things, but you're not closing enough of them. It's probably because you have no relationship with them. Now here's the thing, ultimately, people want to work with someone who will get the job done. They're not looking for a best friend, okay? They probably have one of those. They're not looking for a parent, they probably have those as well, okay? But you still have to build some sort of relationship, some sort of rapport, some sort of commonality with them, because that's gonna make them feel at ease and want to work with you. So we have to do a better job at building relationships, okay? Now, here's the thing. There's plenty of people, and unfortunately, probably some people on this call, (laughs) that aren't really in it for the long run. They're like, look at man, I'm in real estate because I can make a quick 10 grand and get the hell out, okay? I can make a quick 50 grand, get the hell out, all right? For those people, I'm just gonna give you a heads up, the rest of this video, probably not for you, all right? So just, you could probably log off now, or you could stay and listen, it's up to you. But for those of us that wanna be in sales for five years, 10 years, 15 years, we're making a career out of it, we have to build relationships, all right? So what I'm gonna do today is three very basic, easy steps that can help you build better relationships to get more deals in the long run, have a better sales career. All right, so let's jump into it. Building relationships. All right, number one is this, and this is the most important. We'll start with the most important. All comes down to building trust, okay? And you have a very, very, very short window to do that. So in any aspect of sales, you have to be truthful with the client up front, all right? You have to, even if they don't want to hear it. If you're in real estate, you're talking to a seller, and sellers always think that their home is worth more. My home is worth a million dollars, and it's in like a $600,000 market, okay? You can't go, okay, yeah, I think so too. No, because when it doesn't sell for a million dollars, they're going to come back to you and be like, they lost your trust. You lied to me. You said it was worth this. It's not worth that. Okay, you have to say, no, Mr. Mr. Seller, actually your home's only worth 600,000, here's a proof. Okay, you have to be honest with them, right? If you're working with buyers and they think, well, no, I want a home for this price and this area and this and this and this and all these other things. And you have to be honest with them and go, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, based on your qualifications, this is the area we have to be looking at. These are the types of homes, so and so forth. Even if they don't want to hear it, you have to be truthful. You have to build trust because that slight moment that you don't, you've lost them, okay? And it is really hard to rebuild trust, okay? Some cases, impossible. And here's the thing, here's what I want you to think about. Your answer is useless if nobody believes you, okay? Fantastic quote, your answer is useless if nobody believes you. If you've lost trust with someone and you tell them two plus two equals four, I guarantee you they'll still pull out a calculator to verify, right? Because they don't trust you. So you have a very, very short window to do that. So don't mess that up right from the very beginning be truthful, honest about who you are, what you do, and be truthful and honest to them, even if they don't want to hear it. That's the number one thing to build relationships. Now, keep in mind, you may lose a deal because of that, because there's going to be some other person who's already logged off the call because they're in for the quick buck, all right, that lies to them and says, oh, no, we can get your home sold for that price. And then they just get into the contract and then they just keep beating up the person. Well, let's just reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. And the client's just so fed up. They don't want to start over. They just go, okay, okay, let's just reduce it. And that person finally gets the deal. Now, they'll never use that person again or refer them, but they got the deal because they lied to them up front. So long term, they're not going to make it. If you're in it for long term, you got to be truthful up front. You may lose a deal out of it, but it's going to benefit you in the long run. All right? So that's number one. Number two is this. 
Show that you care. And think about this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't know how people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? You have to care. Have you ever been in this position where somebody's talking to you or selling you something and it's clear they're not listening to you? They don't really care about you. They're just trying to close a sale. Is that, doesn't that just turn you off? Like, you're, you, don't, you don't really care about me. You're not listening to me. You're not going after my needs and wants, things like that. You're just pitching me on a sale. You can tell that, right? And it turns you off. It's the same thing. People can tell when you don't care. So you have to listen to them and go based on their wants and their needs, what they're looking to do, okay? Be interested, not interesting, right? Be interested in them. You have to show that they care. And if you show that they, you care, they're gonna feel that and feel better working with you. But if you show that you don't care, they're gonna feel that and it doesn't matter what you say. You could sit there and go, I am the greatest. I've got this sales record and track record and I have this marketing plan and this company behind me and da, 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 all these other different things. But if it comes across that you don't care about them and they can see that, none of that stuff means jack, okay? It doesn't mean anything. You have to show that you care. And the number one way to do that is to listen. Listen to them and base your pitch on what they want, their needs, all right? So that's the big key, show that you care. All right, the third thing is this, and this is really important, know your audience, all right? You have to know your audience. If you're talking to one person, you have to know what type of person that is. If you're talking to a group of people, you have to know the type of group of people that is. For example, know their personality styles, okay? You know, we talk about this, are they amiable, analytical, expressive, driver? Because based on their personality style, you'll know how to present to them and how not to come across as, you know, offensive or anything along those lines. So know their personality styles, know their likes and dislikes, okay? You know, if they like, you know, I'll use this example all the time, right? Now, you'd probably never run into this, but just to give you an example, I'm a baseball fan, a New York Yankees fan, right? So if you're, if you're into baseball, you understand there's a rivalry between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. So knowing that I'm a New York Yankees fan, if you come in and try to pitch me and you got a Boston Red Sox tie on, you've lost some commonality there, you know what I'm saying? Now look, I understand that's an extreme, that's for fun, but the point is you have to know your audience, right? And here's the thing, great information loses value if the presentation is wrong. So if you don't know your audience and you give a killer presentation, knowing like, man, I nailed that presentation, but it's to the wrong audience, it loses its value, it means nothing. You have to know your audience. I ran into this a few years ago. I was doing a presentation and I had a presentation I'd done before and there was a specific joke that was in the presentation. It's always in that presentation. And I didn't study my audience enough. And I made that joke and it didn't go over well. And the rest of my presentation, despite the fact that it was really good information, meant nothing because I lost the audience, right? So know your audience. So before you meet with someone, know things about them, right? If, if you meet someone at a networking event, learn a little bit about them, find some commonality. Know your audience before you do your presentation. So if you're in real estate, before you go on a listing presentation, it's really important to pre-qualify. Right? So you know their personality styles, what they want, what they're looking for, things like that. Know your audience. So those three things, build trust, show you care, know your audience. If you can do those three things, you're going to do great at building relationships. And I promise you that will help you not only today and this year, but in the long run, and you'll have a massive successful sales career. All right? That's your three things Thursday for the week. Please subscribe to my channel so that way you get all my coaching videos. And if you have other tips about building relationships, please send them, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about them. I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to speaking again next week.